Hello and welcome to my ninth tutorial offering mathematical support to Umpa University students studying the module TM111 Introduction to Computing and Information Technology. This tutorial is about bits and bytes. The bit is the most fundamental component of data transfer. The byte is the most fundamental component of data storage. But just before we look at bits and bytes, let's just remind ourselves of our counting systems. And on a daily basis, we use a counting system called Deanery. Deanery basically means we count to 10. And the process is very simple. We count up to 9, then when we reach the top, 10, we put a naught and we carry one over. So here I've got 99. If I add one to it, I get 10, I put a naught and I carry one over. 9 plus 1 is 10, put a naught, carry one over. This concept of reaching the top of my counting system and carrying one over is an important concept which we'll come back to later. On a daily basis, what other counting systems do we use without even thinking about them? Well, one is counting to the base 60. The counting to the base 60 is called sexagesimal and it was developed about 5,000 years ago by the Sumerians. We use it in our timekeeping. 60 seconds equals a minute. 60 minutes to the hour, 24 hours to the day, 7 days a week, 52 weeks equals a year. Here we're using 1, 2, 3, 4 different counting systems involving 60, 24, 7 and 52. And we don't think about it. We do this counting fairly naturally. But just to, again, just remind ourselves what we do with our counting scheme. Here I've got 59 because that's the counting system up to 60. When I, when I add 1 to 59 in the first column, we call it seconds, that becomes 60, so we put a naught, and we carry 1 over to the next column. 59 minutes plus 1 makes it 60 minutes. I put a naught and carry 1 over into the hours column. This concept of reaching the end of my counting system and carrying 1 over is an important concept in all of our number counting schemes. Well, we've looked at counting to 10 and we've just looked at counting to 60. What about looking at a much smaller counting system, just simply counting to 2? So here I've got a binary number. It's 1. When I add 1 to 1, I get 2. We put a naught and I carry 1 over. Because in this system, when I reach 2, it's the top of my counting scale. So if I've got a binary number 1, 1, if I add 1 to it, 1 plus 1 is 2, I put a naught and carry 1 over. 1 plus 1 is 2, I put a naught and carry 1 over into the next column. And just to bring it back to our deanery world, I've actually put above there what the binary number represents. Anything in the first column, if it's a 1 or a 0, that can represent 0 or 1. If there's a 1 in the next column, that represents 2. If there's a 0, it represents nothing. In the next column, if there's a 1, that represents 4. So this is our binary system, this is our binary counting system and we call this a binary digit, sometimes abbreviated to a bit which stands for binary digit. In the deanery world we use 10 possible values for our counting, 0 to 9, but in the binary world we only have two possible values, 0 and 1. So our binary numbers are going to be made up very simply of 0 and 1. So one bit we can represent just simply 0 or 1. So if we're going to be looking at larger numbers, we're going to need more bits. So let's look at two bits initially. This is what we had on the previous slide, really, but let's look at it in more closely detail. When everything is switched off, it represents 0 on the decimal scale. But when I've got a 1 in the first column, that represents 1 in the decimal. If I put a 1 in the second column, because I've got a 1 in there, that represents 2 in the decimal in, in the decimal world, the deanery world, and naught in the first column means there's no one, that number means two. A binary number one one means I've got a two plus the one in the next column, two plus one, gives me three. So therefore, when I've just got a two bit uh, representation of a, of a number, I can only have four numbers counting from naught to three in the deanery world. So if we want to count some bigger numbers, we're gonna need more bits. So let's add two more bits to our binary number. So I've now got four bits. 
that means my binary number can start all the zeros, they're all switched off, and it can go all the way up to them all being switched on. And this represents the deanery numbers 0 to 15. So when I use 4 bits, I can count from 0 to 15 in my, in my deanery world. With 4 bits, I'm using 2 to the power of something. Earlier, with just 2 bits, I was using 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1. But now I've added 2 more bits, and coming in from the right-hand side, my 4th bit there represents 2 to the power of 3, or it represents 8. And the 4th, the 2nd column, the 3rd column, sorry, represents 4, which is 2 to the power of 2, plus the 2 extra bits that we've been looking at already, representing 2 and 1, 2 to the power of 1, and 2 to the power of 0. So a binary number can be written as 1101. Now I've put a little 2 at the end to signify this is a binary number. That represents my fourth bit is switched on, that's 2 to the power of 3. My third bit is switched on, that's 2 squared. My second bit is switched off, that represents 2, but I don't want one of those. And my 1 represents the first one switched on, which is 1. So 1101 in binary represents 13 in deanery when I add up all the components. Similarly, the second binary number there represents the deanery number, number 7. Well, 4, it gives me a count from 0 to 15, but I can now want to add a few more bits to it, and I'm going to add 4 more, and this gives me 8 bits. Now, 8 bits is called a byte, and this allows me to count from 0 up to 255 in the deanery scheme. So I've got a much, much larger range of numbers here to play around with. But notice the piles of 2 have now increased. I, in my 4 bits, I went to 2 to the power of 3, which was 8. But now with the extra 4 bits, I'm starting at 2 to the power of 7, which represents 128. And my binary number is now made up of 8 bits. And so I can switch these bits on and off, just like it could with the smaller numbers. Here's a binary number, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. And I can evaluate that by doing exactly the same as I did before, by looking to see if I count the power of 2 or not. The first binary number represents 109 in the deanery, and the second one represents 199 in deanery. Now I can represent much, much bigger numbers. And when I can represent more numbers, I can start doing things a little bit more exciting. For instance, I'm sitting in front of a keyboard and I've got 26 letters. Well, I've got 26 lowercase letters, 26 uppercase letters. Must that make 52? I've got 10 digits, 0 to 9. That's 62 characters. I've got all the shift characters on the digits. I've got all the braces and the brackets on my keyboard, punctuation marks. So on my keyboard now, I've got lots of characters. And when I can represent up to 255 characters, this means I can represent characters on my keyboard. Now, once I can start representing characters on my keyboard, now I can start adding data to a file that's a little bit more meaningful and transmit data in a meaningful way. So, for instance, if I hit the capital letter A on my keyboard, this is represented in the table as the deanery number 65. But as far as the computer is concerned, it's being stored as a binary number, not one, not naught, not naught, not one. And again, I've just put this little subscript 2 there to remind us that's in the binary world. Now, we live in two worlds. We live, sorry, we live in the, in the real world, but our computers live in the binary world, in the digital world. Just remind ourselves of our counting powers. In the base 10, in the deanery world, we use a thousand as a sort of a basic counting unit. A thousand we call a kilo, 10 to the power of 3. If I multiply a kilo by a kilo, I get a mega, a million, 10 to the power of 6. If I multiply a mega by a kilo, I get a giga, 10 to the power of 9. Now let's go into the digital world of our computers. Here I'm using base 2, and I've just seen if I use 8 bits, 2 to the power of 7 down to, down to 2 to the power of uh, 0, that we call that a byte. But I can keep multiplying my powers of 2 up. And when I get 2 to the power of 10, I get a number 1024. And in the digital world, we call this a kilo. Subtle difference, a kilo, capital K, in the digital world. In the real world, kilo has a small k.
So we can look at bigger numbers in the binary world, just like we can look at big numbers in our real world. In the real world, base 10, we talk about a thousand, 10 to the power of three, a kilo. The mega, a million, 10 to the power of six, a giga, 10 to the power of nine. And in the digital world, we're going to do the same thing. A kilo is 1024. A mega is a kilo times a kilo, 10, 1024 times 1024. A giga is a kilo times a mega. 1024 times 1024 times 1024. In the power of 2, this represents 2 to the power of 10, 2 to the power of 20, and 2 to the power of 30. Now, I'm sitting in front of a computer that's connected to an internet, and so many bits are arriving per second. Per second, I'm getting 20 megabits. That would be 20 times a million bits. 20 million bits, or in scientific notation, 2.0 times 10 to the power of 7 bits. A kilobyte, a kilobyte is 1024 bytes, but I have to multiply it by 8 to turn it to bits. So 1024 times 8 gives me 8192 bits in a kilobyte. A megabyte, of course, is 1024 times 1024 bytes, and I need to multiply it by 8 to convert it to bits. So a megabyte is actually 8,388,608 bits. And my big storage count unit of gigabytes, a gigabyte is 1024 times 1024 times 1024 bytes, and I multiply that by 8 to turn it into bits. And you can see the figure there that represents the number of bits in a gigabyte. Don't forget that number 8 when we convert bytes to bits. Now we'll be looking at this a bit later on in the next tutorial because the bit is the most fundamental component of data communication and transfer. The byte is the most fundamental component of file storage. And so later we'll be looking at how files are moved across the internet and then stored onto a computer system. And that's the subject of the next tutorial. Thank you for listening and watching, and uh, the, my resources can be found on the following website. Hope you've enjoyed the tutorial.